Daniel Ponce de Leon, 30 years of age, giving away two and a half inches in height. He weighed in at 128 and a quarter pounds on our unofficial scales tonight, 136 pounds. Broner has rehydrated nearly 15 pounds to 144. Mira, aquí está bien. Right here. Right here is good. This is my commands. Touch gloves. God bless. Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner, the problem. One of the best nicknames in sports Stay right now. <laughs> but at the moment, is just a big talking, fast South so Southpaw pro prospect. And tonight we find out if maybe he's something more than just that. Against Daniel Ponce de Leon, who made six successful defenses of his junior featherweight championship before losing that belt to Juan Manuel Lopez in 2007. Brother is a right hander, so yeah. look at that. I've two. seen him fight both ways. Yeah, he fights both ways, but he's starting out right handed tonight. Ponce de Leon said, I might have to feel him out for about two or three rounds and get a feel for the kid. Obviously, Ponce de Leon, much tougher fights in his career, which began in 2001. 200 professional rounds in the ring. Broner has 60. But Broner has the advantage in size. Even Ponce de Leon told us during our fighter meeting yesterday he's much more comfortable at 126. And that's not usually a good thing to hear when a guy's fighting 130. Ponce Leon trying to punch off the ropes. Broner's just brimming with confidence. In fact, when we asked about being on this big stage in this co-feature on Boxing After Dark and how he sort of is going to temper his emotions, he said, well, same way that you guys need to temper your emotions in meeting me. <laughs> Well, it's a step up for him, and he does have to be a little careful because those are eight-ounce gloves, if I'm correct. And in eight-ounce gloves, a lot of different things can happen. So, but I think he's all right in this one. Broner throws a counter right hand. He said something else very interesting in the fight of meeting. He said when he looked at tapes of Ponce at Julian, he said, he said, is this how he fights? Is, is this how he fights for real? I mean, as though he's going to walk right through him. So we're going to see if that's going to happen tonight. You know, I said he was a southpaw. I've seen him on some undercard shows off television. But I think I'm mistaken because he doesn't look like he's switching up. No, I don't think he's changing at all. No. There's some grainy photo. <laughs> Yeah, he said he said he saw tapes of Ponce de Leon. He said he turned it off and put some Floyd Mayweather on. He couldn't watch it. Ponce de Leon needs to make this a rugged fight. Looks like he used his head a little bit there. You gotta stop with the bell. La campana. With all that experience, Ponce de Leon has one round in the bank as far as studying what the young Broner has to offer. You hear me? Okay, let's go. Pick it up. Let's go. Come on. Oh, oh. You got the mouthpiece? You got the mouthpiece? Get set for the start of round number two. Adrian Broner out of Cincinnati and Daniel Ponce de Leon in the first round. 
Ponce de Leon threw 46 punches according to CompuBox, 25 more than Broner did. Boy, what would you like to see Broner do here in round number two? Well, I'd like to see him use a jab more and let his hands go a little bit more like his corner asked of him. He's, he's clearly the quicker fighter. However, he seems, seems to be a little too cautious here. I know uh, Ponce de Leon has the experience factor, but he does have to, have to let his hands go if he wants to take charge here. So far, what we've seen from Broner is his supreme level of confidence actually helps him. And this is not a guy who's not going to be throwing back, even though he is moving up in weight, Ponce de Leon. But Broner just fights like a very confident fighter. He does, but like this corner said, he has to add something behind that one big shot. He's throwing one big counter right now, and most of the time, you won't catch a guy with the first big counter, especially a guy with as much experience as Ponce de Leon has. During the fighter introductions, you saw Aaron Pryor in the corner of Broner. Pryor was actually one of Broner's first coaches in his early amateur days in Cincinnati. Part of a rich a tradition of Cincinnati fighters. Aaron Pryor, of course, uh, one of the all-time greats, was 32-0 and 0 after he knocked out Alexis Arguello for the second time and then had drug problems and came back, wound up losing a fight many years later, but essentially ended his career, his real career as an undefeated fighter. Hall of Famer. It's one of the better lightweights that I think I've ever seen besides Pernell Whitaker. So, so good at lightweight that he couldn't get a title shot, had to move up to junior welterweight to get his title shot. Lightweights wouldn't fight him. Cincinnati like New York City and Washington, D.C. in recent years has produced a lot of really good fighters and flashy fighters, but has yet to produce a great fighter in the last 10 or so years. Ponce de doing good work to the body of Broner. That's where he's mad most of his connects. And Roy Ponce de Leon said to us he's going to use two or three rounds to feel out Broner. So far, so good for him. Yeah, so far, so good because Broner, Broner is not really following up with his counter punches. So now he's letting Punch de Leon get in the fight. If he lets Punch de Leon get into the fight and make it an ugly fight, then it may not be a good night for Broner. Counter right hand from Broner. Broner's now in pot shotting mode where he's just trying to counter off of misses. Yeah, but his corner asks for more than one shot. He's not giving it to him. Ponce de Leon blocked that right hand. End of round number two. Okay. Next Saturday night, it's the premiere of Running Rebels of UNLV, an HBO sports documentary about the University of Nevada Las Vegas basketball team a dominant force in the late 80s and early 90s whose star-studded teams and colorful coach created headlines both on and off the court. On March 30th, just days before the Final Four, a special episode of Real Sports takes stock of the NCAA, examining whether the current system is working or not. And there is Aaron Pryor in the corner. I said 32-0. I think it was 36-0 with 32 knockouts. At any rate, he was a monster at junior welterweight. Whirlwind style, incredible heart and stamina. The funniest thing I remember is a guy knocking him down, and he get rolling over, popping up, and the referee had to get him off of the guy to give him a standing leg count. <laughs> Let's check in with Harold Letterman, an unofficial ringside score. All righty, Bob. I've got a 2 to nothing, 20-18. to 18. Daniel Ponce de Leon. You know, Bob, I like that left hand to the body. I can't help say that. The kid gets inside, and he digs that left hand hard. He's a real K2 veteran, tough guy to fight, and Adrian Broner is going to have to get a lot more busy to win this fight. Adrian Broner looks good, got good skills, gives you good feints, doesn't throw enough punches. So far, Ponce de Leon doing more damage with that left hand to the body. Two to nothing, Ponce de Leon. All right, Harold, well, coming into this round, Broner had only thrown 45 total punches in the first two rounds. Ponce de Leon told us during the fighter meeting, if they're using me as a stepping stone, it's going to be a slippery stone. So far, 
he's done the good work through the first two plus rounds. Yeah, he said it's going to be a very slippery step. <laughs> yeah. You know what separates the really special prospects? What, what are the fight wise guys looking for? You're looking for a guy at this stage to start putting his punches together three and four at a time. That combination punching that Broner's not showing. One counter left from Broner, but not after Ponce de Leon continues to wing that left hand to the body, like right there. He's making good shot, good hook by Broner. Roy, what do you think stopping him from putting those punches together? He is accurate, he's very fast. Uh, Ponce de Leon getting off first is forcing him to keep his hands at home for defense. That's why he's telling the guy to try to get off first. And see that? He makes the other guy keep his hands home for defense. And that's what he's doing to Bunner right now. And these left shots to the body just continually land. Yeah, that was a good left down the middle of the end, though. Hot showing some veteran caginess. It's what I call the Pacquiao effect. Pacquiao throws so many punches that he makes these guys keep their hands home. And they can't punch back with him. Just like that. You gotta catch those punches because you gotta respect that. Well, the slapping left for Broner. And the problem is that Punch de Leon feels as though he can take these punches now. So he's willing to trade. Broner might want to left that tape on a punch de Leon a little bit longer. Well, what he, wanted, what he might want to do is go to the body a little bit. Well, a young fighter has to learn to go to the body early on an old crafty guy like Ponce de Leon. And Ponce de Leon is going to his body, which should remind him to go to Ponce de Leon's body. Meanwhile, we got a good little fight going on. <laughs> End of three. Hey, don't make this out no close fight. You know what I'm saying? Don't make it out no close fight. Put them together. You, you throw one hook and you ain't coming nothing back right to nothing back. Okay? Let's go. You letting him touch you too much. You know what I'm saying? Quit standing in front of him. You know what I'm saying? Balance. Move. You know what I'm saying? Punch on your angles. You hear me? Don't stand up there and war with him. Start back on your jab right now. You hear me? There's the Daniel Parks de Leon family, his wife Mira, and Daniel Geronimo and Estrella. And so far, good three rounds for dad and husband. Step on his foot and bring that left inside, and he's going to fall. Step on his foot. In the four fights that CompuBox has charted of Adrian Broner, that's the most punches landed against him. Now, he has been in against much inferior competition than a Daniel Ponce de Leon, who made six successful defenses of a junior featherweight championship. You know, usually when a southpaw fights a right-handed fighter, which obviously Broner is, the feet can get tangled accidentally because their lead feet are so close to each other. But here in Ponce de Leon's corner, you hear his corner say <laughs> in between rounds, step on his foot. They want him to use it as a tactic. And he's trying to do it too. Just like that. And it'd hold him in place for a shot. Hold Broner in place for a shot, not let him step away. <laughs> I don't know if I would have changed anything after round three. <laughs> but, you know, you do see a veteran here at least trying to follow the instructions of the corner and a, a, a younger fighter not following the instructions of his corner. And, Roy, it looks like Broner has dropped that right arm a little bit to try to protect from some of those body shots. No, I don't think that's the case. I think he's just trying to get himself loose and get into the fight because that's normally the way he fights. However, I think he may have underestimated Ponce de Leon a little bit because Ponce de Leon is here to fight. And this is what I always try to teach young guys. In boxing, most guys don't get to be champ by accident. To give people a sense of where Broner is at this moment, Juan Manuel Lopez knocked out Ponce de Leon in one round a couple years ago. That's when Ponce de Leon lost his title. But Lopez really beat him on his crisp boxing skills plus athleticism. And here Broner is showing athleticism and some crispness, but not 
the same degree of skill, I think, that Lopez showed in that fight early. Mishata. 